It was unusually cold and snowy in the late winter, when suddenly the wolves howled. Due to the bad weather, they couldn't find food in the mountain and set their eyes on the shepherd's flock and tried to attack it in the late night. Alan, the owner of the flock, rushed to resist the wolves with his, to sheepdogs armed with weapons. When the wolves attacked, he urged one of the sheepdogs to call Travis to help. Who was Travis? In the face of the vicious wolves, could Travis solve this crisis? Alan was 42 years old and alone in the grassland, but he did not feel lonely. He had sheep and two sheepdogs as his companions. Many people may find such a life boring and tedious, but Alan was happy. One day in 2006, Alan came to the grassland to graze his animals as usual. The sun was shining brightly at noon, so Alan found a shady spot to rest for a while. Just lying down for a while, there were suddenly some roars in the forest, which made him sit up and squint at the forest. At that moment, two sheepdogs came to Alan's side to guard him, showing a fierce look and making a defensive posture, obviously sensing danger. They guessed that it might be two tigers fighting over territory, and their growls were getting closer. When Alan felt close to them, he climbed a large tree so that he could not only expand his view, but also escape the tiger's attack. While in the tree, Alan looked into the distance and saw a male tiger chasing a young tiger cub that looked newborn and was only about the size of a dog. The tiger cub was struggling to escape. In the nick of time, a female tiger came out of nowhere and knocked the male tiger off its feet. The tiger cub's mother stood in front of the cub and roared at the male tiger. A big battle was about to break out. Suddenly, the tigress roared and slapped the male tiger, which made the male tiger angry, so it roared and charged at the tigress again trying to attack it. After a few rounds, the male tiger had the female tiger pinned to the ground. Seeing that the tigress was in a weak position, the tiger cub screamed and rushed over, but just as it got close, it was slapped away by the male tiger and landed not far away from Alan, wailing in pain. Seeing that the tiger cub was injured, the tigress resisted more fiercely and suddenly attacked the male tiger's stomach with its claws, after which the male tiger let out a more painful scream. Its stomach was cut open, but it did not die immediately. After regaining the ability to move, the female tiger did not immediately run towards the depths of the forest, so the male tiger immediately chased after it. After the two tigers ran away, Alan was shocked that the tigress was bitten on the neck and could not stay alive. He guessed that maybe the male tiger wanted to mate with the female who had the tiger cub and refused. After the two tigers had gone away, Alan came down from the tree. He looked at the lone tiger cub, which was wailing and crawling towards the direction where the mother had disappeared. Alan felt very conflicted, and after a while he decided to adopt the tiger cub. After more than half a month of treatment, the tiger cub was not in danger of dying. Two months later, the tiger cub was cured and accompanied Alan to graze every day and learned to manage the flock from the sheepdog, which was very smart. Due to its small size, it was often hit by sheep. When Travis was one year old, it became a shepherd tiger, and although it was small and childish at the time, it followed Alan every day. As time passed, Travis turned two years old and lived with Alan for two years, growing in size and becoming mischievous. One day, Alan was grazing with Travis and his sheepdog when suddenly a loud noise came from a distance, and Alan looked in the direction of the noise, thinking it might be a predator. After settling the sheep, Alan called the conservation station. By then he was a little anxious and planned to go over and check it out. Arriving at the sound, Alan froze, not realizing that he knew the trapper. He asked Jenkin, who was similar in age to Alan and also a rancher, 
what he was doing. Alan stared at Jenkin and asked him why he was hunting in the reserve and carrying a homemade weapon. He said that this kind of behavior is against the law. Jenkin showed a pained expression and said he had no choice, as his grandson was sick. He borrowed a lot of money, but it was still not enough for his grandson's treatment. At that moment, there was a sudden sound of footsteps not far away, as if there were many people. Alan panicked and said that the protection station was coming, and Jenkin panicked and tried to turn and run, but he was stopped by Alan, who said he couldn't get away and that it would cause suspicion. After the protection agency came, Alan grabbed the weapon from Jenkin and threw it in the bushes, then waved and called out to them. Since Alan often grazed in that area, the staff of the reserve knew him. They asked Alan where the trappers were, and Alan pointed in a certain direction, and calmly said that the sound seemed to be coming from there, but now it had stopped. They were relieved when the protection station people left. Jenkin tried to be grateful to Alan, and Alan waved his hand and said that if he saw Alan do something like that again, then he would not be able to help him hide it. After saying that, Alan grabbed his weapon and left with Travis and the sheepdog. Soon, two years had passed. One afternoon, Alan took Travis to the forest of the reserve. Travis was already four years old and had become an adult tiger with the ability to survive, so Alan decided to let it go back to nature. Although back to nature, Travis did not go far but established its territory in the place where Alan often grazed. Late one snowy night, a dozen wolves appeared silently near the sheep pen. After a few days of observation, they set their eyes on Alan's sheep. After approaching the sheep pen, the wolves did not rush to attack, and two of them came out from the pack while the others were hiding. It turned out that they intended to lure all the sheepdogs out, and then take the opportunity to sneak in. One of the sheepdogs was about to rush up after finding the wolves while the other one stayed behind to guard the sheep. The wolves' plan was perfect, but the scene was seen by Alan, so he hastily called out to the sheepdog who was about to rush out. After the plan was discovered, the wolves showed themselves. The sheepdogs became wary immediately after seeing the sudden appearance of a dozen wolves, while Alan took out his weapon, which he hadn't used for a long time. He knew he was about to engage in a fierce battle, and the wolves were about to attack. After the wolf howled, the pack charged toward the sheep pen, Looking at the oncoming wolf, Alan looked to the sheepdog, weapon in hand, and asked if it knew where Travis was. Guard barked a few times, as if to answer him. Then Guard ran across the sheep pen into the distance. By then, the wolves had scaled the fence and broken into the sheep pen, after which three wolves rushed towards Alan and Fernie while the others rushed towards the sheep. Alan and Fernie didn't care about the sheep, and one sheep gave the order when it saw the wolves attacking. At that time, all the sheep barked and formed a circle with their heads facing inward and their buttocks facing outward. The wolves were very cruel in hunting their prey, yet the sheep's behavior shocked them because they were unable to attack. However, the wolves were not stupid and even jumped on the backs of the feeders to attack them. After a howl, three more wolves rushed over. With the advantage of numbers, the wolves had the upper hand, and when Alan could deal with one wolf, but could not stop the pack, he was down and was pounced by one wolf, and Fernie saw it and tried to help him, but it was surrounded by four wolves. As it was distracted, a wolf bit on its hind leg. In the critical moment, the flock suddenly dispersed, and when they saw Alan and the sheepdog in trouble, they thought of helping them. But the moment the sheep scattered, they became more dangerous. The wolf gave the order again, so all the wolves pounced on the flock and many of them died, while the living ones cowered in the corner and barked. The wounded Alan got up from the ground and they beast, then he rushed forward with his weapon, followed by Fernie. Looking at Alan and Fernie, the wolf showed a fierce face. 
Just as it was about to kill them, guards suddenly appeared. It looked to the wounded Alan, and Fernian let out an angry and loud growl. Then there was a loud bang and the fence was broken open, and it appeared in front of them and roared at the wolves. Travis charged into the pack and attacked the wolves. It roared and grabbed a wolf that was trying to run away, and bit it right in the neck. Before long, most of the wolves were injured. Five minutes later, the wolves were all dead. After killing the wolves, Travis, Guard and Fernie came to Alan, who was about to pass out, and looked at him. Travis wailed in pain, while Guard and Fernie kept licking his cheek. After a violent coughing fit, Alan weakly opened his eyes, and said he was still alive. All things have feelings, and the feelings of animals are often sincere and real. That's today's story. Click subscribe for more interesting stories.